definition of unlikely is likely to fail, unpromising. This past summer, I had the opportunity to spend 10 weeks with 10 girls from the community that I grew up in. My goal was to teach them about leadership. Before the start of the program, I eagerly ordered the curriculum and I uh, brushed up on all of those words that we use as, as adults to talk about leadership, like teamwork and brainstorming and leadership styles. I was determined that these girls would leave my program thinking of themselves as leaders. On the first day of pr the program, I anxiously awaited the girls' arrival. I thought of some questions that they might ask, and I thought of questions of my own, just in case I, they were too shy or afraid to participate in the discussion. And one by one, these beautiful girls with varying shades of brown skin and bright eyes arrived to the community center. As we sat in the circle, I took a deep breath and readied myself to do an exercise that I do with all of my girls' groups. I asked them to close their eyes, and they were to raise their hand if they thought of themselves as leaders. What do you think happened next? Every single girl raised her hand. Rightly or wrongly, I come to anticipate the answer, and in this instance, I was wrong. The following 10 weeks involved a plethora of learning on both sides. I learned that all of those notes and that preparation, total crap. These girls could fill pages and pages with ideas that they had for projects that they wanted to launch or businesses that they wanted to start, and they were acutely aware of the issues in their schools and their communities. And not only were they aware, but they had ideas for how to address them. We executed as many ideas as we could. At the end of the program, one of the girls looked at me and she said, Miss Ariel, I love that when I have an idea and I say it out loud, I can make it happen. That, that is exactly what I wanted those girls to learn. No jargon required. Now, I could go on and on about why I think the program was a success or what I hope the impact was on those girls, but what really surprised me was how I felt at the end of the program. I didn't feel joy or satisfaction or I didn't want to pat myself on the back for a job well done. I felt guilt and a little bit ashamed, if I'm honest. It was odd. I came to realize that before the program, I'd made some assumptions about these girls based on their age, based on their race, based on where they live and their life experiences, based on their ancestral history. And I felt sad about that because I assumed that they were unlikely to be leaders. And I felt that sense of guilt and shame because I know exactly how that feels because of my age, my race, uh, the life experiences that I have, I too am unlikely to be a leader. I always say that it's truly unlikely that I ended up in the places and the spaces that I did. I've managed to work on Parliament Hill and sit at tables with some of the top elected officials in Canada. I've worked on national poverty reduction strategies, and I got to travel to places in this world that my ancestors could only dream of. You see, as an African Nova Scotian, I am the descendant of black loyalists who came to Nova Scotia after the War of 1812 with the promise of a better life. But when they arrived, it was the harshest of circumstances, and they endured decades of systemic racism that excluded them from public and social life. And for many of them, they entered into a life of servitude that they thought that they'd left behind. I'm immensely proud of my uh, ancestral heritage and where I came from. And to quote the late, great Maya Angelou, I come as one, but I stand as the 10,000 people who came before me who made it possible for me to have the opportunities that I have today. But I've lived the effects of institutionalized racism in this province, from the disparities for African Nova Scotian learners in the education system, to the high poverty and unemployment rates for young African Nova Scotians, and to the overrepresentation of black men in the Canadian justice system. I've lived through the repercussions of choices that people make for themselves and their families when society deems them as 
unlikely or without promise. And as a young woman, I empathize with the 64% of young girls who say that they don't feel self-confident, according to the Canadian Women's Foundation. And I can fully understand that why when I go into a group of girls and I'm talking about leadership and I ask them to raise their hand, nine times out of 10, girls in this province do not raise their hand. As a young person or a millennial, I fully know the assumptions that people make about us, about being disengaged, lazy, and entitled. So, through this lens, Ariel Goff, young, black, a woman, unlikely. Unlikelies are put in a box and excluded because of things we aren't and things that aren't necessarily true. Things that we don't choose or things that we aren't a part of. People make assumptions about who we are and what we can and cannot do and based on their preconceived notions of who we are and our circumstances. When that happens, especially at a young age, you feel an immense sense of hurt and shame. You wonder, what is it about me? What is it that I do? Am I bad? That has a compounding effect on self-confidence and at its worst, it robs people of opportunities. According to the US Department of Education, black students are four times as likely to be suspended and two times as likely to be expelled. A Yale study pointed to clues as to why these disparities exist. Implicit bias. Implicit biases uh, take the form of subtle, sometimes subconscious, stereotypes held by teachers. Yale's study re revealed that these biases are directed at much younger children than we thought and the biases are present in both black and white teachers. So the researchers showed 135 educators videos of children in various classroom settings. Each video had a black boy and girl and a white boy and girl. The teachers were told the following. <laughs> this is my best researcher voice. So we are interested in learning about how teachers detect challenging behavior in the classroom. Sometimes this involves seeing behavior before it becomes problematic. The video segments you are about to view are of preschoolers engaging in various activities. Some of these clips may or may not contain challenging behavior. Your job is to press enter on the external keyboard every time you see a behavior that could become a potential challenge. While the teachers were asked to detect that challenging behavior, no challenging behavior actually existed in the videos that they saw. And yet, when asked which children required the most attention, 42% of teachers said the black boys. These attitudes and implicit biases result in lower expectations and rates of advanced program referrals for black students. Now, I'm fortunate that I had parents who, despite their unlikely circumstances, allowed me to be the stubbornly ambitious child that I was. At five years old, I had to ensure that my homework was done because I knew they couldn't help me. I learned that if I wanted something done, I was capable of making it happen for myself. And despite my parents' fear of the world and what may happen to me, they let me try and fail and gave me the full confidence and support and advocated for me when needed. That is what got me to where I am today. But I full well know that not everyone has that support. And when unlikelies like me defy expectations, we become exceptions. People look at us and question how we manage to achieve what we have and how we occupy the spaces that we do and because of who we are and where we come from. We carry this weight on our shoulders, just like our ancestors did before us, not only to do better for ourselves, but to change the policies and practices that are keeping the other unlikelies in their place. So, to my fellow unlikelies, I say this. Keep proving them wrong. I say, let your situation, your age, your race, the color of your skin, where you came from, to define you, because it is who you are. Own it but don't let it limit you and what you aspire to be and do. Take all of who you are, the anger and the anger and the frustration that you feel based on what people think about you and think about what you can and cannot do 
and use it. Don't let yourself be an additional barrier to your success. That is the determination that I saw in those beautiful girls with the varying shades of deep brown skin and bright eyes. Despite their gender, their age, the color of their skin, their ancestry and their life experiences, and what I thought about them, they already had ideas and they already knew how to make it happen. And after thinking it all through, I no longer felt that sense of guilt or shame, but I felt relief. I know that they'll be okay, and I know that we unlikelies will be just fine. But what a shame it would have been had my assumptions stifled their potential because I thought I had something to teach them or that, that they were somehow devoid of what it takes to be a leader. The program was successful not because of me, but because of those girls who took charge and allowed, it allowed them to think independently, to make decisions about what they wanted to do because you know what, they already know, and more importantly, it helped them act. They got to overcome any challenges, and they got to build the resilience and reap any rewards. But think, how much potential are we wasting? We count people out based on their thought, our thoughts about them and our preconceived notions about their situations. Now, there are major systemic and institutionalized changes that we must make to ensure that people have the opportunity and every sector has a role to play in that. But that's another talk for another time. But we as individuals in this room uh, interact with unlikelies on a daily basis, whether it's your kids, your spouse, your colleague, your parents. Let us stop and think next time. Uh, what assumptions are we making about these people? Are we treating them in a way that says, I already know that you have what it takes to be the person that I know you can be. I'm just here to give you those opportunities. Are you asking them for their ideas and helping them to make it happen? And don't be surprised, like me, when the unlikelies raise their hand, because you never know. It's the unlikeliest of people that just might change the world. Thank you.